Okay, so let's talk about Volleyball je Jeopardy, or however you want to put it. So I'm going to... Um, so you can go Volleyball... Volley Jeopardy. There we go. I'm going to move the Volleyball Instructions.txt in that directory. Pseudo Play Homework, CSI 41. Volley ship RD, no clobber. Instructions, I don't, yeah. CD minus, move instructions, like get instructions, get good dot text. There we go. Nice. So now, yeah, you guys all have a copy of the uh, GitHub. Uh, things. Okay, so what is what is Volley Shipperty? Okay, so there's uh, five different components to it, and uh, you can do them in any order you want. But again, the design of this is so that you um, learn how to take a giant project that seems overwhelming and break it into manageable chunks, and that's a skill that you need to have in real life. That is one of the predominant coding skills is learning how to break things down into solvable problems. Okay. And so, uh, we have here, Britney Spears, of course, I'm stronger than yesterday. All right. Um, so there are five parts to it. You're going to get 10 points for each of the design for each one of these points that you do 10 points. So there's a huge amount of points here. If your grade isn't great, there's a great way. This is going to be a great way of uh, salvaging, your grade at the end of the semester. Or if you don't do it, it'll be a great way of tanking your, your grade at the end of the semester, one way or the other. Okay, so five parts. First part is gonna be volleyball. So what's uh, when you implement this, this thing, what's gonna happen, it's networked. Um, and uh, well, it, yeah, the networking part is actually part four. So the volleyball part is that you're gonna ask a question of the user and when the user answers it, if they get it wrong, it's like they drop the ball in volleyball. If they got it right, then it goes over to the other player. You're making a two-player networked volleyball battleship game, okay? And uh, at the end of the day, what's gonna happen is that two people are gonna be connected on the server. One of them's gonna get a trivia question uh, using the test questions from CSI 40. And uh, if they get it right, then it goes over to the other person and they have, less time to solve the next question than the first person had. So if the first person got it right in four seconds, then it goes to that person and they have less than four seconds to get it right. And then it goes back to the first person and like, let's say they got it right in three seconds, they get a new question, they have two seconds, they do it in two seconds, that person gets it in 1.75 seconds and this person gets in 1.5 seconds. They have to go faster and faster and faster until somebody drops the ball. And then once somebody drops the ball, uh, well, uh, then it goes into battleship mode. And so you're going to have a grid. You're going to place the ships for battleship on the grid in, in the setup phase. And uh, and when you win a round of volleyball, you're going to get three shots in battleship. So you boom, 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 hit, miss, hit, miss. You're going to draw it on the screen. That's part five. And then you do another round of volleyball. And so you're going to be going uh, doing trivia over and over again. And whoever wins the trivia back and forth gets three battleship shots. Once you've sunk all of the ships for the other player, the game's over and you win. Okay. And so there are five components to this game and you can do them in any order you want. And I want you thinking about which one is easiest. Okay. So the volleyball is the timed back and forth. Uh, the way you can tell how long somebody took to answer a question is uh, by using clock, for example. Clock returns the number of microseconds since the program began. And so you can simply when you display the question, you call clock and you save it into an integer. Like if you write, wrote down a thousand, you write it down. When they answer, call clock again. The current time is 4,000. 4,000 minus 1,000 is 3,000. That's how long it took them to answer the question. It's pretty easy. Um, and, then, uh, and then the other person solves it and you have to see if they solved it faster than the first person. And if they did, you go back to the first one and so on and so forth. So this is something that you could do in CSI 40, right? Just imagine that none of the other bullet points exist. Like if, if you're like, I'm going to start with the volleyball part. Imagine none of the other bullet points exist. There's no networking. There's no Jeopardy. There's no battleship. So all you have to do is just make a dummy trivia question 
with like, you know, four, like, I don't know, what is two plus two? You know, and there's four answers, one, two, three, and four or whatever, you know, and it's like player one and you type in the right answer and it prints on the screen. That took 3.5 seconds. And then it goes to player two. What is two plus two? C, wrong. You drop the ball. That's it. If any of you guys can do this. You all have the skills to do volleyball. Imagine none of the other bullet points exist. Just doing a simple, you know, ask a question, time how long it took. If they got it right, it goes to the other person. If they got it wrong, they drop the ball. And then if the other person gets it right, if they took longer, they drop the ball. If they got it wrong, they drop the ball. If they get it right and faster, then it goes back to the first person and repeat. All of you guys can do this probably in less than an hour. And that's 10 points. It's like an entire homework sign. Okay. 2 plus 2 equals 22 only in JavaScript. Okay. So uh, bullet point 2, also 10 points. Make Battleship work. Grid. If you guys don't know what Battleship is, it's uh, one of the best movies of all time with uh, uh, the fantastic actress and singstress Rihanna in it. Uh, there you go. It's also a board game. So, <laughs> so uh, for those of you that don't know the board game, uh, it looks like this. It's a grid. Look, it's a 2D array or make a vector or whatever. So you start off by setting up your ships on the uh, in your secret side and uh, you take turns calling out like, I'm going to attack A1, I'm going to attack B2, A I8, whatever. If you hit the target, you announce hit. If you miss the target, you say miss. And your goal is to put a peg into every one of your enemy's ships. And whoever whoever sinks all of their enemy's ships first wins the game. So again, this is a CSI 40 homework assignment. 2D array, place ships on the grid, uh, take turns calling out uh, grid locations and you either print out hit or miss. You like keep track of like how many hits they have and once they have, what would that be? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12. Do they have an aircraft carrier? I think they're missing the aircraft carrier. Hmm. I feel like, I feel like that's, I, I seem to recall an aircraft carrier. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's the aircraft carrier. Yeah, anyhow, you like, you know how many hits it takes to win, right? So uh, once you've hit all the, all of the open spots on the ships, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Once you've got 17 hits, then uh, unique hits, right? Then you win, or the other person wins. Okay. So this is, again, a very doable thing. Imagine that Imagine that this is the entire homework assignment. Can you do volleyball? Can, can you do volleyball? Can you do battleship? Right? 10 points. Okay. Then bullet point three is uh, Jeopardy. And so for Jeopardy, this is file AO uh, and basically nothing else. Um, there is a folder, no, sorry, there's a file called uh, well, questions.txt. And this contains every quiz question from CSI 40. Every quiz question from CSI 40 in 2021. So there's new ones that uh, I didn't want to release the uh, the latest and greatest quiz questions. But uh, all of the quiz questions from like 2020 and 2021 have been put into a text file by Tipton and uh, I think Hawkman. And uh, the format of the file is there is a question. And then the first answer is the correct answer. Wrong answer, wrong answer, wrong answer. Okay. So, if a long long is eight bytes and an int is four bytes, how big is Bob? Union Bob, da da da. Okay. Um, we have a few variables of type list pointer. How would you, da da da, you know? And so the first, everything's on a line. That's an entire line, or it should be. And then that's an entire line, that's an entire line. I don't know why there's two missing semicolon options. That seems dubious to me. Um, it seems wrong. Um, we both looked at 35 plus quizzes, yeah. So, um, basically, uh, for this one, you have to learn how to do file, well, learn, you have to remember how to do file IO. You're going to open up the file. 
read everything in. It's got a format of question, right answer, wrong answer, wrong answer, wrong answer, space. Read the whole thing in and then randomly display a question and the user will type in C and you know shuffle up the answers so that it's not A every time. You know, shuffle up the answers and be like correct or wrong. That's it. That's it. This is again something that you could do in CSI 40. Open a file, right? Uh, open a file, read the whole thing into like a vector of questions, make a class, like a question class or something. And uh, read uh, read the whole file in, and then just ask, you know, pick a random question, ask the user what's the answer, A, B, C, or D. If they get it right, print out right. If they're wrong, they get it wrong. 10 points. 10 points. You'll have plenty of time to do this because this should take you not too long. This is all CSI 40 stuff. Okay. And they're literally CSI 40 questions. Okay. Now the networking is going to be hard. So the networking means just uh, you're going to make those things which you would be playing locally on your, you know, terminal. Uh, you're going to make them work over the internet. Okay. And then five is making a nice interface for it. So um, the interface part is actually probably going to be pretty easy also. Uh, you know, you just make a nice little grid for the battleship. You know, just make it look nice. Add some colors. You know, have an area where the trivia questions can come in. You know, maybe have a, I don't know, a display showing how many seconds that the other person took. Um, no SFML. You have to do 2E, not SFML. So uh, you could, you know, if you do this without anything else, you can just hack it up. Just make it look like. You know, we're doing agile development. Just hack something together, make it look nice, some colors, just some see out statements. It's, you know, again, an hour or two's worth of work to get your 10 points. And then you're gonna have to start integrating them all together and that's gonna be a little bit annoying. But you know, once you have your work done, it's just a matter of like, okay, rather than displaying dummy data for battleship, I'm gonna display the actual battleship data, you know, in the actual spot of my ships and their ships or, or whatever, you know? You have to use colors. Yeah, you have to use colors. Um, so, uh, the networking is the only really hard part for this. So I would put that off maybe later. I don't know, but I'm going to show you how the networking works. Okay. So, uh, so I have, picked, there's a lot of different ways you can do networking and I have picked the easiest to do networking code ever. So yeah, networking is one of the hardest things in computer science. Uh, uh, parallel processing has also got a reputation of being pretty hard, but this is the entire program. So this is a server. And what does it do? Well, one thing you have to understand about the internet is that uh, every, every thing on the internet has a host name, which is its IP address, like www.google.com, which is a, a domain name that resolves to an IP address and it's got a port number. So like when you connect to a web server, uh, the port number is usually like 80 or 8080. Um, if you try running your server, if you try running your server and somebody already has port 1300 in use, it will fail to open. So if I try running my server right now, uh, okay, it worked because uh, I guess nobody else is running on port 1300. Let me duplicate my session. and I run the server again, you will see the port is already being used. So uh, you should probably pick a port that uh, none of your other classmates are gonna use or make it configurable. Like, you know, you can read CN, like, hey, what port do you wanna open on and change it to, uh, you know, like, port, read, you know, you can do something like this you want. Um, so, uh, or you just hard code it to like 1700 or something. Uh, ports uh, cannot go below 1024. Those are all reserved for the system. Uh, all ports below 1024 require root access to open. Um, port numbers go up to 65,536. So you've got quite a few ports to pick from. Just pick one unique for your project. Okay. Um, so I'm going to change mine to be, I don't know, 2100. 
And then on the client, uh, right now the client actually reads the um, the host name and the port number from uh, the from the command line parameters. It actually reads it from argc and argv. Uh, but you can actually hard code those as well if you want. You can actually just put in localhost and uh, port twenty one hundred or whatever if you want. So I'll just show you how to do that right now. So now it's going to be hard coded to uh, local ho local host means my server, whatever IP address I have. So it's going to connect to csi4x.com port twenty one hundred. And so if I do this, and let me go ahead and kill the old server here. Type make rebuilds the client. Uh, doesn't like that version from int to const char star. Uh, all right. Client.cc line 12 right here. That should be a string. I'm rebuilding it and I've hard coded my server to use port 2100 now. Okay, so now if I run the server, uh, it's opened a port on port 2100. If I run the client, it connects on port 2100. And so what does it do? Okay, so right now all the server does is it waits for somebody to connect. It then uh, gets the current time and it returns that as a string to them. And so this is actually the demo code from Boost, uh, but we can modify it if we want. But like you'll see if I keep running the client over and over again, it is giving me the current time of day. It's a very simple networked application. So for example, if I wanted to modify the server, I could have it print out, uh, you know, anything that I wanted. Um, print out. Um, I don't know, give me, give me something to say here. What do you guys think? All right, swag it is. I swag. Yep. Recompile. We run the server. And now every time the client connects, it prints out iSwag. And you might notice, like, wait a second, uh, that seems just like um, C out. And the answer is yeah. Like, after, like, the stuff up top here looks a little bit weird. You know, and this is kind of like the, the stuff you need to get the networking going. Um, for <laughs> this is a, a while true loop basically, and like we could replace this while true, and we can reformat if we want. A little nicer looking. Um, change with port whatever you want. So not everybody is using port twenty one hundred or whatever. Uh, so after you've kind of gone through this thing, and you don't even really need to worry about any of that, you don't need to worry about any of that, you've, uh, maybe this, but once you've gone through all of that, you can just basically uh, write to it like it's a uh, C in or C out, right? So like that's literally just, we're C outing basically I swag, right? This thing here is returning a string, right? We just C out it. And then on the client side, so you see, on the client side, we just call get line. Um, we, we could double right arrow also if we wanted. And uh, yeah, and so all this stuff up here is just, you know, actually not really even that necessary. Um, we can just pull all that out if we want. And so, you know, if, if you can't connect to the local server, it'll print out a message and quit. Um, if an exception occurs, it'll throw an exception and quit. Uh, but yeah, basically you just double right arrow into something or you can get line. And so S is the socket. And so you can just, you know, read from it, just like 
You know, just like how you could like CN get line. You just read from the network. That's it. So you just see in and see out, kind of. That's it. That's with there. There's that little bit of boilerplate that kind of looks weird. You know, like this kind of looks. I don't know. Looks a little scary. Maybe I don't know. That's creating a new I/O stream, TCP I/O stream. The name of the variable is S. It's connecting to the local host on port twenty one hundred. And then once that's set up, you can just you know use it like CNC out like. Uh, this might look familiar if you used f streams before. You know, you can read and write to a file. Um, so it's not, um, it should not look too, too crazy to you. Um, this probably does up here. The name of the variable is stream. It's a TCP IO stream. That's waiting. This code here waits for somebody to connect to the server. And then uh, once they connect, it just sees, see out I swag to them. And then it closes the connection. That's it. That's the whole program. So if we uh, um, have an error, then it will um, not do this. So if you try accepting and an error occurs, it does not see out I swag to it. Um, if something weird happens, it will throw an exception and it'll print the exception like error bind, you know. Uh, Port is in use, that kind of stuff. So this is basically saying, open up port 2100. This guy here is what allows connections to occur. This actually waits for a connection. And then once somebody connects, we just echo to that stream I swag. And then we have networking. So when you're, when you're doing this, I recommend you have like half the screen running the server. <laughs> Somebody's using it. Troll. <laughs> Trolls are trolling me. Um, twenty one oh one. All right. Okay. Okay. So the uh, server is now running on port twenty one oh one. Oh, I already have the server open. Nobody's trolling me. I'm trolling myself. Amazing. And then if I edit client.cc, um, you want a one, clear screen, make. So we have here, you can see the server is running over here. And then we've got the client running over here. And this is actually how you can do your development. So if you're on a single, uh, even if you're on one machine, you can actually simulate being over the internet by having two different terminals open. The client's over there, the server's over there. And you just click answer trivia question there, click over here, answer trivia question here, click over there, answer trivia question there at the end of the day. Okay, so uh, that is uh, enough demo code to get you guys going, I think. So that is, uh, that is our class for today. Um, I highly recommend you guys get a partner for this. Um, you don't have to. It'll probably make playing the game a little bit more easier if you have a partner. Uh, which ones do Monday? Any of them. That is your task. Uh, so your task is to figure out which one of these things you want to have done by Monday. Okay. So maybe you just want to open a file and ask a question and print true or false. Did you get it right? You know, that you have all weekend to do that if, you, if that's what you want to do. Or you can do Battleship over the weekend. Right, make a working two-player battleship game. Uh, that's probably a little bit more work. Again, though, just CSI 40 level of knowledge. Make a 2D grid, 2D array, 2D vector, however you want to do it. Play some ships, shoot at each other. When all the ships are dead, victory and loss. Uh, timed back and forth between two people. Uh, networking, um, I'd probably put that off till later. Uh, and then making a text user interface. So text user interface is something like... Uh, Sure, go for it. Something like this. So, um, kill the rat. Uh, 
for the dog. A gnomish cave woman called W. Kearney. More info about gnomish cave woman. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Anyway, so it's kind of IDing things for me. Move the cursor around, stuff like that. Okay. So I am a I'm a troglodyte, as you can see. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, really quit. Yes. Do you want to see your attributes now? No. Okay. So that is a text user interface. Okay. So you need to build a text user interface for um, the game. You know, you're gonna have your battleship grid, their battleship grid, the trivia zone, how much time you have, that kind of stuff. And uh, as the days go on, you're gonna be integrating these things with each other. So once you have your TUI going, then the battleship will use the TUI text user interface, with colors and, and things like that. Once you got the trivia going, you'll have the text displaying here. Uh, maybe a clock showing how much time it took, that kind of stuff. You can use incurses. Uh, and NetHack uses incurses, yeah, but uh, I would recommend you guys use my uh, read lib and colors lib, which allow you to do uh, printing color text and non blocking IO. It's a lot easier to get into than incurses. Incurses is better, like, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely harder to use. Okay. Uh, yep, you are going to. Can't use SFML. You have to use a text interface. So, um, yeah. So pick one. So for Monday, pick one of these five things that you think that you're going to be able to accomplish by Monday, and do it. And have your GitHub ready. And what you're going to send to me on Canvas is your GitHub link, which bullet point you did, and a screenshot of it working in action. Okay. And you're going to have to add me as a as a, a contributor if it's a private repo. You do all five. If you want to do all five by Monday, knock yourself out. Then you can do the extra credit one. The extra credit one is doing TDD. And we'll walk you through how to do TDD, a test-driven development, uh, next week. And I kind of I kind of give you the lecture on TDD today, but not how to do it. So we're going to have a lecture on uh, G-Test next week. And uh, uh, we'll probably go into more detail on these things next week as well. So you got basically two, almost three weeks to work on this thing. Um, no, two weeks to work on this thing. So it's a big project, but it's going to be broken down into manageable chunks. So it's going to be worth a lot of points. So if you guys need a partner, post on to Discord asking for a partner. I will create groups on Canvas. It's self sign up. So sign up for your own group on Canvas and uh, get cracking. And that is it for today. I hope you guys are excited. And Corelli, like I said, says this is his favoritist homework assignment ever. So uh, uh, good luck, have fun, and uh, don't let the bug, bed bugs bite. <laughs> G or GG rip one or the other. <laughs> we'll find out. In the, we'll find out. We'll find out. But there should be something out of these five that you should be able to knock out of the park really fast. Really. Okay. So um, think about it. Think about how you're going to approach this problem. Okay. And we're going to be treating it like a business. We're going to be turning in work every couple days instead of waiting to the end and dying in a train wreck. Okay. So that's it. Peace out.